Hi guys, and welcome back to the Bookish Babes podcast. So today is Jess's release episode. We are so excited. Um, it's out today and, you know, Valentine's Day, the perfect day for it. And once we read the book, it'll have much more meaning. Um, and so we're super excited. Well, I'm super excited. I think Jess is super excited yet scared. Everyone's scared. It's her debut and like, yeah. we're excited. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, today I'm the one asking her the questions and oh. it's not the other way around like last time or when we're usually both asking the questions. So if you want to hear more about her book, definitely go check it out. It's available on Kindle Unlimited right now and Amazon on pay for paperback. And so, yeah, we are going to get into the questions now. Are you ready, Jess? Uh, no, but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first question is, what's the title of your book and when is the release date? So the title of my book is Forget Me Not by Jess Taylor. Um, and the release date is today, February 14th. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so could you give us a summary of what your debut is about without giving away too much, which I know is very hard for Jess, but we're going to do it. Oh my God, this is the question that I dread. So, um, <laughs> okay, um, this might just be a lot of random sentences and words put together, but we're going to try our best. So the book starts with kind of a big event that is the catalyst for the whole story. It's a romance book at its heart. It um, is a love story between two characters, Caden and Logan. Um, but there is a third POV in the form of journal entries in there. Um, it deals with some very heavy topics. There are quite a few trigger warnings. Um, it's essentially about these two people that meet and have this instant connection, but just don't want to do anything about it but kind of are forced to um and uh, there's a lot of secrets there's a lot of lying there's a lot of trauma <laughs> a lot of things that I put my characters through and at the end it all kind of comes together and I don't know if that was a summary but we're gonna pretend like it was because that's the best I can give you <laughs> Yes, we don't want to spoil anything. Well, she doesn't want to spoil anything. No, I, I basically don't. the whole plot of the book, and I haven't read it yet, but still, <laughs> she knows the same. Like half of it. I know like half of it, but like you know the same thing with mine. Yeah, we're we're literally the same right now. It's fine. It's fine, but we're gonna read it. We're, we'll we'll read each other's books one day. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, <laughs> okay, so. Could like, what is your, what started your writing journey and was it something you always wanted to do or was there a specific moment that you decided like, I'm going to do it? Okay. So I've always loved reading. I've always loved writing. I think a part of me always wanted to write a book. It was always like, kind of like a fun, like, oh, maybe I'll write a book one day, a type of idea. But I think I never realistically thought I would do it um, until... I realized this community existed, COVID hit, and we kind of all got involved in this. And I was like, oh, like, I, I didn't even realize indie publishing was a thing. And then once I did, I was like, maybe I really should give this a go. And I was in college at the time for majoring in exercise science, like not at all what this is. <laughs> and I just decided... I don't think I'm going to use my major. It's too late to change at this point. I'm just going to write a book and see what happens. And I'd had this story in my head for a really long time. I wrote out the prologue in 2018. Um, so not the exact prologue, but a version of it in 2018. And I don't know. It just, I feel like I sat on it for a really long time and it kind of evolved into what it is now and then once I started writing it and I've written so many half books all growing up I remember being in high school sitting in like algebra and just writing in my notebook books instead of um paying attention which I <laughs> don't do that um but <laughs> I this was the first one that I was like this this is a full story and I kept writing until I finished it and now it's published as of today Yes. <laughs> no I don't think you guys really understand the like 
what it's like to put a part of yourself out into the world like it's so nerve-wracking and like the process of like trying to like figure it out and like releasing it is like a huge deal like a huge it's deal stressful. it's so stressful and it's expensive um <laughs> especially if you're indie publishing but we're doing it well she's doing it right now and like we've You've already done it <laughs> She's doing it right now. And it's like, it's so cool that we've come up to this moment. We've talked about this for such a long time. Like, yeah, I definitely thought this was going to be published earlier. I didn't expect it to take seven months to write, but here we are. So (laughs) it's out now. So it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And y'all are going to love it because it is so good. And I had the chance to read some of the chapters before people, I didn't finish it, but it's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay, so what has your journey been like from the beginning of maybe, you know, what we started with the podcast to like now? Um, okay, so I'm going to go off from when we started, like the writing updates. Um, so I graduated college in, oh, goodness, May, May, I believe May, maybe April. I'm not quite sure, to be honest somewhere around that time and um no it was May it was May and I right after that was like I have no other distractions this is it I'm sitting down and writing this book and like I said I already had the prologue prologue or like a form of it written um and that was kind of really what started the whole story so um I started writing I probably took what like a three month break from writing maybe at some point because I moved that was stressful um (laughs) and I originally kind of thought like I was going it was going to happen a certain way it was going to happen in a certain period of time and everything it none of that happened life is crazy but I mean (laughs) it it just kind of evolved I feel like I started out very slow and kind of not knowing what I was doing. And then as I kept writing, it was like, okay, this is making sense now. And now I'm actually like figuring out how I write. And then Sam had to teach me the entire publishing process because I knew nothing. (laughs) Um, And I would have known nothing if not for her. Um, And then now here I am, just like it's public. I have a lot of little things coming I'm planning what's next now and what's next is scary but I I think I've I would say what's changed from then to now is that I'm a lot more confident in what I'm releasing now than when I first started writing so yeah yeah for sure I remember when like Jess was telling me she was like I don't know if I'm going to release this. And I was like, Jess, the snippets that you've showed me, like they're amazing. And I think a lot of people are going to like it. And then now after her beta, some like her beta alpha team went over it. She got validation that I told her. Maybe it's different because I told <laughs> her a lot, but I think it's just, I'm really proud of you, Jess. Like, look at you. Oh my God, stop. I'm going to get like emotional, which I don't do. But... <laughs> I mean, it's really just, um, I think it's not so much even about needing other people's validation. It's really just, I feel like I've found validation with myself with it that, um, and also comfort in the fact that like, I know now I am not publishing this, expecting everyone to love it. There's a lot of things in this book that I know people probably won't like, honestly, like my book is not going to be for everyone and that's okay. I'm a reader first and not every book is for me. So I'm okay with that. And like, I'm not going to talk about bad reviews yet because I'm not going to know what that feels like until I get one. And I know it's not going to be fun. And I'm probably just going to try and stay away with, away from them, to be honest. But like, I'm confident enough now in my own writing that I feel like everything that I wrote in this story was something that needed to be said. And that that's all I can do. You know, I, I wrote the story. This is how it was supposed to go. This is what was supposed to be told. And now that's it's out of my hands so nothing else I can do and whatever people will do with it what they will (laughs) okay so everyone has a different way of writing what does your writing process look like for this book chaos (laughs) um 
I don't even know my writing process. It's just a mess. I the only organized thing I do is I make character profiles, which are very in depth, like 15 pages long. Um, and those are because I have no clue what I'm doing when I'm writing. So when random scenarios come up, at least now when my characters are thrown into them, I kind of know exactly how they would react to them. But I started off thinking I was going to plot everything, I was going to plan everything, it was going to be super organized and neat because that's really normally how I am. Um, that did not happen. I tried plotting, did not work. I did write like a very loose outline. I did not follow a single thing on it. Um, <laughs> I would say I literally just started writing and it was kind of weird because Sam knows this when you're writing, it's not really you talking. It's like your characters talking to you. They're like an extension of you and you're just writing the words, but they're the ones saying them. And I would get to the, like be approaching the end of a chapter and I'd be like, I have no clue where I'm going. I don't know what I'm going to do when I finish this chapter. And then I would get to the end and they're like, oh, no, this is what we're doing. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we're just going to keep going. And that's essentially how the entire book went. I just kept writing and hoping it would figure itself out. And lucky for me, it did. So <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's really just, I, I write and write and hope it comes to me. And so far that's what's working. And I hope it does the same for the next book because if not, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And I totally understand what Joseph is saying, because there are some times where I'm just like, I did not know that he was going to be in there that much. Um, I didn't know uh, she was there, but that's apparently what happened. So yeah. I think I text, er, I texted you at one point when I was writing, I was like, apparently we're doing this now. And you were like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know how I got here, but we're here. So we're just going to go with it. Like <laughs> that was literally the entire book for me. I'm just like, I don't know what got me here, but here we are. So let's roll with it. Yeah, exactly. And like, the funny thing is, is that like at first me and Jess thought I was going to be the one that doesn't plot yes. and she was the one that's going to be both plotting. Now it's the um, other way around. I plot yeah. and she does it. So it's like, both of like because she's the organized one I'm the one that's all over the place usually so it's weird yeah where it's very you know what maybe it's like I need one chaotic thing in my life and you need one organized thing in your life I don't know I'm not sure what it is but we're just we're very much the opposite of what we said because I cannot plot to save my life I will say what that's part of my process too I have about um like oh, probably over a hundred voice memos in my phone of when I'm driving, just me talking to myself because I get random ideas and I'll just talk them into my phone. And also my notes app is like an archive for random ideas that I get at 4 a.m. So that's, I guess, part of the process, writing random things wherever or talking them into whatever, wherever I can write something down that it goes down on paper. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so... I know the answer to this question, but were there any specific inspirations behind any of your books or this book in specific? Because you don't, well, yeah. The... Yes. So the prologue, can I say what the prologue is? Is that a spoiler? No. I mean, I think the plot's more the spoiler of like what happened to App. Yeah. Okay. I can it's the first the chapter like, it, like yeah, you're gonna know literally within the first sentence when you open the book so. yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but okay so um this is trigger warning for people just so you know um but the prologue is a school shooting um and I don't know if I've actually even talked about this on here I've talked about it on my page but uh, my senior year of high school I was in a school shooting um, and the experience that the female main character, Logan, goes through in that prologue is essentially my experience. Um, there's a lot of details changed for characters and plot um, in the future, the future of the story, as well as like privacy for me and other people that were there that day. So it's not exact, but the essence of what Logan went through emotionally and everything um, is 
my experience and that is the only real portion of the book um but that's kind of what inspired it that I wrote that not long after the shooting happened and it evolved and changed over time and that kind of inspired me to take a look at how people react to an event like that because I felt like I reacted it to it a certain way um and others reacted very differently than me and sometimes I was judged for the way I reacted and um the guilt and the what-ifs and everything that comes with it um so that was kind of the catalyst for what inspired the story do with that what you will um and then the characters came to me and kind of had a mind of their own and just blew it up from there and yeah that, that was the inspiration and it it while it starts with that that is not the premise of the story I never wanted it to be I never wanted it to be a story about that specific thing rather it's a story that happens where it's a story where that happened but other things are happening in spite of it so yeah that's it <laughs> okay so who out of all of your characters do you feel like you relate to the most Ooh, um so I think I put a little piece of myself into every character, um, like one trait at least, but probably just because of the experience that I just described, probably Logan, um, because of the way she handles things in that way are very similar to myself. So yeah, probably Logan, which she definitely doesn't handle things greatly at times. So calling myself out a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> Okay, so going off of that question, like, who is your favorite character you've written and why? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I know this answer, and it better be the answer I'm thinking because she's the best. Yeah. Um, it's not one of the main characters. It is a side character who I just love so much. Um, her name is Demi. She is Caden's sister and also Logan's best friend and roommate um and she is the most chaotic mess you have ever met in your entire life but she is just freaking hilarious like I don't know she <laughs> I can't go into too much detail about her but I love her so much she's definitely my favorite my favorite too I love her <laughs> Literally, she sent me a voice message the other day and I was like, I love her so much. Yes, we, we love Debbie. Debbie is a queen. Yeah, she is. And I was about to say something, but. No, we're not saying no. anything. <laughs> we're not saying anything. <laughs> you don't know what I just thought. Like, no one knows what I just thought, you know? No one knows a thing. No one knows a thing. Very secretive, mysterious. Yeah, she's, okay, that's another thing. She's I'm more secretive. No, and she's going to keep all of her, like, books, like, the next books, like, to herself just so you know I will probably announce some things about the second one sometime soon sometime soon we well, yeah, have to get this out like first we have to get this out let it have its thing and then we'll yeah like I'm just not I will say this the second book the couple in the second book are people that you have met in Forget Me Not. I won't say who. I won't say anything else about it. No titles, anything. But there are characters in Forget Me Not that will definitely be getting their own book. That's all. That's and all. it's very heavily hinted, so I'm sure everyone can figure it out. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be able to figure it out. Like, yeah. thing, like I, I think it's so funny because for me, I'm not secretive. I'm just like, I'm just going to let it all out. Like, everyone knows all the <laughs> for my next books like the couples and everything and she's gonna be like book by book and I'm gonna be like there's no mystery to me like I have no self-control like <laughs> no I'm definitely secretive um you know what I have to be secretive though because I'm too chaotic not to be like I'm pretty sure you know I changed Logan's name like four times same like while I was writing it <laughs> same with Kaden she like literally yeah, like I, I'm not set on things like I guess kind of now I have to be because i written other characters names already but like yeah I'm too chaotic to like announce things ahead of time because I my brain just doesn't I, I change things a lot 
<laughs> well, I made that mistake too. So there's that. Um, but you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're not going to talk about We're not going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> so, but it also was something that was happening at the time and it just came out of nowhere. And I was like, yeah, that's not, no, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was a good decision. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so <laughs> what were you most excited like about leading up to this release? Ooh, um, honestly, probably just for people to read the book. Like I, like I said, I'm confident enough in it now to say that like, I really, really love this story and there are parts in it that are really special to me and like kind of hit home in a way, um, that I connect to. And, uh, these characters are very real characters. They they have a lot of flaws and they make a lot of mistakes and there's a lot of forgiveness that has to happen. And uh, I think the way that helped me even writing it was a big part of it. So I'm just excited for people to read it. And I hope that, you know, there's one person that really connects to it the same way that I did and just gain something from it. Um, I don't know if I should say the dedication on here. I mean, I guess it's released now, but um, the dedication is written to all of those people, all of those who struggle with survivor's guilt. And I hope that anyone who reads it that does struggle with that really finds a sense of understanding and like they feel seen from it. And yeah, that that's what I'm excited for, just for someone to feel seen. That's all I've ever really wanted in publishing a book. So if one person feels that way, I'll be happy. Wow, so deep, so deep. <laughs> I'm really not this deep normally. <laughs> no, but the book is that deep. Like for me, I was just like, I hope people like my spicy scenes. Like that's it. Okay, but hey, I'm talking a lot about emotional. There, there are good almost five spicy scenes in there. So <laughs> like the not- just so you know it's so spice there is I promise he's got a really dirty mouth and it's yeah that that's probably one of the best parts for me there's a lot of spice I promise <laughs> okay so last question to close this out um what tips would you give to a debut indie author in the community or like out there in general I feel like I'm like not even qualified to answer this but we'll try our best <laughs> they do, you know it's like Kurt yeah, yeah. yeah um okay two things so the first is that if you I I know a lot of authors edit while they write and I commend them for doing so because some people it works great for them and then others it doesn't um I went into this thinking I could edit while I wrote and it hurt me so much more than it ended up helping me because as I was rereading my things, my words to edit it, I was hating myself. I was hating everything I wrote. It was holding me back. It was making me not want to even continue the story. And the second that I was able to let all that go and say, you know what, I'm going to write the first draft completely through, never read a single word back. And then I can go back and tear myself apart. It helped so much. And by the time I did go back, I was so much more confident in my writing that I wasn't tearing myself apart as much. So if you feel like you're struggling in the same way that I did editing and writing, don't. You don't need to. Sit down, write the entire first draft all the way through, and just get the words on paper, and you can go back and torment yourself later, (laughs) if you're like me. Um, And then secondly, most cliche thing ever, but just write the book. Like, there, the thing about romance is that it doesn't matter if you're writing the same tropes or the same... um, like similarities, you know, to other people's books, because romance books are the same a lot of the time. There's a lot of similarities in them, but that's what drives us to them. That's what makes us love them. We want to see a million books in the same trope. And, you know, we we want to see, relive almost, sometimes we just want to relive the same love story in different words multiple times. So if you think that your story isn't, you know, is not comparable to someone else's if you're having imposter syndrome anything like that it just ignore it just write the book because I guarantee you there will be one person that loves it and I think that makes everything worth it yeah for sure That's Every- my advice. Everything <laughs> just said. you know <laughs> I-, I was one of those people that was writing and I was like 
I don't need to reread this to know that this is bad, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> like, but like also like your writing gets better. Like I've noticed a complete difference from the first book. To yeah. Jess is going to notice the same thing. Yeah, it evolves with time. And I mean, I I think that, I think something we can all learn is just to not be so hard on ourselves. I think that all of us are capable of writing something and being creative and just, that's what writing's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a creative outlet. So if it's becoming more than that, then it, it's probably, it. you know, it just, it shouldn't be more than that it should just be fun and happy and exactly how reading is for us so yeah yeah okay well that's all the questions we have for Jess make ah. sure to go get her book forget me not out right now it's live it's live and it's on Kindle Unlimited so that's always a plus so yeah. yes Kindle Unlimited girlies here exactly so <laughs> do you want to say anything before we end this podcast um well if you're listening to this and you've already read my book thank you so much for reading it I hope you loved it um and if not that's okay too um and yeah thanks for like supporting us all both of us through like all of this like we're both now we started this podcast as readers and we're both officially authors and that's a really cool evolution and a lot of these listeners have been with us since day one and it's just really exciting. So thank you. Thank all like none of this would be happening without all like everyone that listens. So thank you guys. Um and go read my book if you haven't read it. Go read it. Yay. <laughs> Make sure to get the paperback too, because that cover is stunning. Yes, the cover is gorgeous. Shout out to Kat at TRC Designs. Go get it. Um yeah, that's all I have to say. Okay. We'll Thanks see you guys next time. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for listening. And...